All right, hello everybody. Welcome back to another client interview. I'm getting into the habit of doing quite a few of these recently. And today I'm joined by a client and friend of mine, Sean, um, who hopped into our program um, back in October of last year. And we're recording this mid-February, so it's been about five months since Sean hopped on board. And in that time, he's been able to add $20,000 in new monthly revenue to his agency. And there's quite a story behind how he did that and you know where he was before working with us and stuff. So in this video, we're gonna take the opportunity to ask Sean some questions. I say we, it will be me doing the questioning. And um, we'll, we'll basically find out what the hell's going on and, and how Sean's been able to do this. Um, Sean, could you just introduce yourself and explain what your agency does and what niche you're in? Yeah, uh, Sean Primtera with ROAS Marketing. Uh, that may change as we, you know, as we go along with the niche and everything. Cool. Um, but I've uh, been really niched in on um, helping coaches to get uh, to get more clients. Mm -hmm. Amazing, man. So you've got a bit of an interesting backstory before joining the program where you were doing quite well, but then something happened and your revenue dropped. Would you mind just sharing with everyone where you were before joining us? Yeah, I mean, last summer it was um, doing about 45K a month. Um, you know, like we were basically mostly focused on e-commerce. We did some B2B kind of like appointment setting stuff, more like just outsourced, you know, had, had some people running that for us. But, uh, you know, really strong kind of like sales funnel and everything. Everything was going pretty well. And then the economy just kind of came in and was like, no. And so, you know, um, that dropped down to like, you know, 15K a month and in uh, around December time and, and um, you know, like through the program, been able to bump that back up above 30K plus. And mm -hmm. then I think the big difference is that it's not like, it, it looks a lot different. Like the the kind of base of, of customers requires um, a different kind of maintenance. Like, so with e-commerce, like if I had that same level of client base with e-commerce, I would like, there would be a lot more maintenance, like mm -hmm. a lot more hands-on maintenance. Whereas like with, with what I'm doing, you know, from stuff I've learned with you guys, like it's, there's still some maintenance and some whining, but I mean, it's, it's nothing like the day-to-day -day management of an e-commerce store and, you know, client. Yeah. That makes good sense. So, so you, you had this sort of drop off in revenue because of the economy, you joined the program to sort of correct that. What were the main problems you were looking to solve with the program and what were the main reasons you invested in it? Well, one of the things um, that I had like started to notice is that that e-com for agencies has like become super, super competitive. Mm -hmm. um, and then just e-com in general was starting to kind of take a dive around that time. I mean, December is typically kind of a weird time because even though it's like going really well, it's like about to go not very well, you know, for most e-com. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so it's a weird time. It's kind of a transition time. But um, I was, you know, starting kind of like to feel like I should transition out of the e-commerce stuff. I mean, I still manage quite a bit of e-commerce stuff, but, um, you know, really like the goal now is, is really to just focus purely on B2B stuff, like helping coaches. And, and, um, the reason for that is it's, um, it's a lot like more consistent. I mean, I'd say it's still super competitive. Um, but like, I mean, when, when it comes to, um, e-com agency stuff, I mean, it literally has become so commoditized. I mean, mm -hmm. that it's like, it, that it, like, it, you know, it's basically like, you race to the bottom in terms of retainers. And then like, you know, like they just treat you like, like crap. I mean, clients do, you know, it's just, you know, I'm basically just done with all that. Yeah. I hear you. So the problem was acquisition. So what strategies in the program did you deploy? Cause I know you've mentioned you'd use our sales script quite a lot to close a lot of calls as well. Did you use any of the appointment booking stuff as well? Um, so there's, I'd say there's a, a bunch of different things. I mean, um, you know, part of it was like kind of like really focusing on the offer part of it is like kind of this sales mentality of like, like I, you know, I run ads, you know, like I'm not currently running um, any for, for client acquisition, but um, you know, but like, like a lot of these kind of newer, younger guys, I mean, literally there's like 16 year olds starting agencies in the group, which is like just wild. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're not running ads. You know what I mean? Like they're just starting off with like cold outreach and stuff, but like, I mean, I, everything I do, like I try to do it like, you know, like crazy, you know? And so that's just that, that's how I am. Yeah. So like, you know, I was like running ads just for, for example, like I would have never in the past, like reached out, like cold called like people on comments, mm. you know, like people that just like commented, like I would like, you know, maybe send them a, a message or whatever, but like, I would never like look them up and like cold call them. And so I think there's just like a mentality shift that kind of comes with, with the, uh, the program that, um, you know, like from a sales standpoint, as well as like, 
you know, I, I had always done cold email stuff for clients, but I had like outsourced it. Um, so kind of learning that process in the mm -hmm. um, program, as well as, you know, just kind of, there, there, it's, it, I think a lot of it's like the mentality and then like, you know, the kind of um, mindset stuff that you talk about, but there's, there's also some actual functional tools um, to use as well. That's good, man. So one other thing I wanted to touch on is I remember you, we were talking about this in the DMs a while ago, and you mentioned that like financially, like a while ago, you were sort of in quite a bad place and considering like selling some things or something to sort of like make ends meet, but you're not anymore. So now that you've got this, we could call it predictable way of getting clients or that new sort of mindset and you're, you're sort of the agency's bumping back up to where it was. How does that feel? Because I can imagine it feels pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, like I said, December got pretty rough, um, you know, like basically like lost like a bigger client, um, which was like kind of insult to injury. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and so, <clears throat> but that, but like the flip side is that client was like a big pain in the ass. So it was like a weird, <laughs> you know, it was it's a weird kind of deal in, in the sense that it's like, it was kind of a relief, but, um, but yeah, I mean, like you said, I mean, it was super frustrating. Um, I'd, I'd say, you know, like I'm still not like comfortable. I mean, I, I think it's going to take quite a bit more for me to like really feel comfortable, but, um, and I'm definitely not even close to goal. I mean, you know, like for me, I mean, like like hundred K a month would be like just really starting to like kind of achieve like an actual goal, yeah. you know, of where I want to be. Because the thing is, is that it's not like, it's not like you're like putting all that into the bank. You know I mean? There's a lot of like fees involved. There's, you know, paying contractors. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a lot of stuff that comes out of that. Um, so on a net basis, that might end up being like 75 or something, you know, yeah. um, whatever, you, you know, so you've got to pay uncle Sam as well <laughs> exactly, <laughs> and then Stripe and then all that stuff. So that, yeah, that, that makes sense. So what, what is the, what is the, the goal next? So you do, you're sort of, you know, running at that sort of low to mid multi six figure mark. Where do you see the agency being in a year? Um, I mean, I, I don't, I don't like to think like a year out cause it's like so far. Um, mm -hmm. I, I like to think of like three to six months. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I think it's very reasonable for me to, get to like the kind of 50k plus you know mark again um here in like the next three to four months and then mm -hmm. at, you know six to, to nine months i'd like to be in that like in that 100k plus and i you know there's there's literally like nothing like you talked about in the recent acquisition genesis you know like the kind of oxygen of of yeah. agencies is is uh is basically you know booked meetings and stuff so i'm mm -hmm. really just like you know focused on <clears throat> just continuing to try to increase the volume of that and and um, really just hone in on the offer, hone in on the service delivery, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think the biggest issue for me lately has just been the service delivery piece of it, you know, just trying to, trying to fulfill on, on the stuff that, you know, I do a really that's good the, job of, of selling. That's so the, that's the problem we give, <laughs> you know, now you've got to figure out what to do with all the clients, but I guess that's a pretty good problem to have. Um, so if you were, if you were restarting the program, um, or so let's say someone was joining the program, what advice would you give to them knowing what you know now about having used it and having achieved this, this level of success that you've got in the last few months? Um, that's a, that's an interesting question. Um, I'd say a lot of these guys are kind of like, I think they come in and they're just like, they're not, they're not familiar with a lot of this stuff and they're not really sure like what to do. Um, just try shit out, you know, like, I mean, I think like on some of the um, coaching calls, you talk about like, you know, you shouldn't even be on this call. You should just be dialing, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and it's like, you know, I mean, like, I, I just, you know, I feel like, um, you know, when it comes down to this stuff, people get really hung up on things like, you know, they, they like, they want like an approval of like an offer and like the group, but like, I mean, what really matters is like client approval of an offer. Exactly. Right? Which so is it's like, it's like, it's usually almost always what we say is like, someone's like, Hey, do you think this email copy would work? I'm like, I'm not a dentist. So you know, I can't tell you, like, just, you'll be able to find out faster if you just sent a hundred emails to be fair. So yeah, yeah. Just get out there and test it. You know, like, I mean, literally like anybody can get, I mean, you can get these numbers on Google. Like you don't even need to, to buy lists or anything. Most of the lists, like, you know, like I use like a, a list provider or whatever. And like, you know, you can click a button that says like name and, and, and phone. But like, honestly, like most of the time, I'm like going to be able to find that same information just by doing a Google search of that person. Yeah. There's no, there's no real excuses, which is why I like, because there's no real barrier to entry to it. So, so one question I was asking these interviews is if you, let's say you were talking to someone on the fence who was thinking about buying the program 
and they were sort of unsure as to whether it was going to work or not, what would you say to them to try and convince them to come on board? Essentially, can you sell my product for me? <laughs> I mean, I, I think that the biggest, the biggest thing, you know, like I said, like I, you know, put in the comment the other day, it was like, there's a lot of these like guru types out there and like a lot of them are just like assholes. Yeah. And like, I think the biggest thing that differentiates you is that like you're a capitalist, but you're like also like, not an asshole. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like you're genuine, you know, which is like super rare for like people that are in kind of in like this space, like in like the coaching kind of whatever you want to call it, like mm. guru space, you know, like <clears throat> that's pretty rare. So like, I just say that like for anybody that's, you know, thinking about signing up or whatever, like you guys are like legitimately different. Like I could tell that right away when I, I like I could see the engagement in the group, like, mm. you know, you were jumping on calls, like you're not like a kind of an absent founder where, you know, a lot of these guys, like once they get to the level that you guys are at, like they would be completely vacant. I guarantee yeah. like they wouldn't be like, they, they wouldn't be doing this. They wouldn't be, they well, wouldn't be upgrading the program. They wouldn't be doing yeah. any of that stuff. I think that one of the problems with, with my niche or my market or competition, whatever you want to call them is there's no, it's, it's very easy to, there's no real accountability because it's all online. So like, you know, if, if it was the case where like all of your clients were like in your town, then you have to show up. But because you're, because you're sat in a, in a glass panel penthouse somewhere on these ridiculous profit margins and, you know, there's no, like, there's no real incentive to update your products and stuff. And there's no real incentive to show up. There's no time. regulator. There's yeah, no, it's not like there's insurance no... where there's like a regulator that can come yeah, in and like tell exactly. you, Hey, you're being an asshole. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, look, you can't be a dick. You've got to turn up. But, but I think that like, because we are more concerned with the next 20 years, um, we, we, we have to show up and, you know, also if, if I'm not in the community, then there's less reason for other people to be there. And, and no, no, it's not, it's not all about us, but I think that it's not hard to spend a couple hours a week just talking to clients and helping them and stuff. So I, I really appreciate that. So man, I'm really appreciate you coming on here. And I'm also really happy with, with your story and everything that you've been able to do. Um, honestly, like these interviews, they do make me pretty fucking happy. So I really appreciate you coming on. Um, I remember at the start, we, you also mentioned um, before this interview that you've got like a website or something. So if anyone wants to check out Sean's agency um, or maybe any potential services you've got, if you're interested in anything, if you're a coach, for example, um, there'll be a link to Sean's website in the description. And um, I promise I didn't pay Sean to say what he just said. <laughs> um, do you have anything else you want to go through, mate? Or is, should we call it a day there? No, not really. No, yeah, I'd say uh, like if, you know, if people actually follow the the program and show up and, you know, jump on the calls and get involved in the community and stuff. They'll definitely see results. Yeah. Really appreciate it, bro. Well, you take care. Talk to you later. All right. Nice.